with pretty much everything we've done up to this point it's all been more based around the basic design of everything we kind of have enough in the bag here now to probably start actually texturing this and as we texture this and we start to put we start to put things together we're gonna get more ideas and we'll probably end up designing more assets on the fly which we'll design um, UV and wrap them and add the materials to them in the one go rather than kind of spacing everything out this is probably what I would say is the more painful side of it because a lot of these things they're quickly put together to flesh out a design and a look of things but a lot of the ge geometry that we have here it is quite low poly but it's not optimized it's like we need to actually add um, more cuts into this to make sure that everything is going to be squared because we're going to be making um, a texture atlas for this and it needs to be when you're dealing with modular um, assets like this you need to make sure that the seams are absolutely perfect the way they line up so I'm going to be showing you a technique that I kind of started using a while back that it's very safe from what I can see it's never given me any problems I work mainly with um, VR systems and this this kind of stuff has never given me any performance problems. It's always very well optimized and it runs like a dream. So I'm hoping that it won't have any uh, any issues at all. So it's a bit of a mess, the entire scene at the moment. So I'm going to kind of clean it out a bit. I know that these were temporary. I don't need them. The wall pieces here, I'm going to get to later. Um, I'm going to start UV unwrapping the roof segments first. So I'm just going to hide those wall assets. I want to rename my folder here. Um, yeah, wall assets is fine. And I'm just going to hide that. So now they're not in the way anymore. I've kind of segmented these off. These are the shorter height roofs or roof units. So I'll press M. I'm going to add them to a collection of their own. I'll call these um, short walls. Very unique. And genius and I'm just gonna close that as well and I'm gonna turn these off so I can't accidentally turn them back on again so everything that's left here are the taller roofing segments so I just want to get rid of these actually I don't need them I'll delete them now I just want to make sure that these are set properly pivoted that one looks okay I'm going to bring him to there and I'll check these two. Okay, so he's kind of hopping over the center line there with snap turned on. So I want to select everything. Oh, would you look? Yeah, okay, that's the problem. Right, I will select these guys here. Actually, I'll select the roof and I'll. I'm actually going to isolate these. So I can do a quick shortcut. I'll select the roof, which I know is pivoted here. Um, let me think, actually, it's probably a better way to do this. Yeah, right. I'm going to use the snap cursor to select it. So it snaps my cursor at this point. Now I will press Control I and invert the selection. And I want to reset all transforms. That'll put them on the Set a point, and now I'll right click and say set origin to 3D cursor. So now this unit and all the other units have the same location as the main roof there. So now I'll just grab all of these and I'll right click and snap selection to, to grid. There we go. And now I'll snap my cursor to world origin. Alright, so he's ready to go. I'll come out of isolation and I'll move him up. There. And just this one now left the same. So I'm going to pull him. Hopefully he'll snap for me. Now, same problem. Alright, select this. Snap. Cursor to selection. Isolate this, select the roof and control I to invert the selection. And now I will Q all transforms, right click, snap, 
Snap selection to cursor. No. Set origin to 3D cursor. There's so many options here. It's, it's, it's actually quite easy to get tripped up a lot, I find. Now with everything selected, I'll... Snap. World origin. No, that's cursor. Again. Snap selection to cursor. There we go, eventually. Now we just have to do it for God knows him anymore. Alright, move him up. And those on the grid now fixed. Actually, this guy wasn't fixed. We just got that there. Although the main unit is, is fixed, so I'll isolate this. Select the roof. Control. I to invert that and I'll press Q all transforms. There we go. Now I'll grab these and bring bring them over to this side. Alright, so this is gonna be a pretty long process because the before we start UVing this, we need to optimize them. And that will mean, because we kind of rushed through making this, we took the easy way to make them first, knowing that there'll be a bit of cleanup down the road. So the likes of, if you see these faces here, um, this inside face, like, uh, what do we select this? What are you doing? Oh, okay, right. Didn't even realize X-ray was on. So like this face there. In fact that whole middle section that's in kind of sandwiched in between those. We don't need that. But we can't just get rid of everything because it there is things that rely on it. Like if we were to get rid of this piece, there is some parts of it that's visible to the outside. So we can't just delete that we need to before we do we need to cut this so I'm just going to start with this piece here I'll bring it into isolate in fact actually I don't even need this rounded roof part I'm just going to start with this object here and I'm going to start cutting this and removing the bits that I don't need so, to kind of break it down, the bits that we do need are going to be divisible. So we're going to need this side of the highlighted face there. We need the underneath. And obviously we need this much of the underside of the roof and we need the roof itself. So all the likes of in here and this point from that corner up, we don't need. So we're going to start a process of cutting all that out. So I will start with this piece here. I know I can't just delete it, so what I want to do is add a cut into it. Right, so I will press Ctrl or add a cut, and I want to bring it this side of the other part. The reason being is from this point inside that line, I'm going to remove it. Press X and remove the face. And now because this piece here wasn't altered whatsoever, we know that those points in the corners are exactly where we need those points to end up. So rather than cut it this side and remove it and guess it, we're just gonna basically use our vertex snap and we're gonna snap back to that object. So from here, I can remove this piece that we don't see. And I'll do the same on the far side here. So, I want to put a cut into this. Control R. I'm just going to move that to the outside. Tree to go into poly select, and I'll select the inside. And X, remove face. And now I'll remove the top face that we won't see. And now, by hovering over this piece that we released there, pressing L, it'll select all that inside. And we can remove that. So now we've got. The outside here and we have an inside 
we don't actually um unless you plan to make the house interior accessible as well and your player or whatever you're going to be is going to be up here you probably don't even need to keep the inside but i think for the sake of demonstration i'm going to because i might actually um depending on if people are asking for it or not i'll probably show how to build up the interior of something like this as well so we are going to use that for the moment for now though i'm going to select this piece and I think I might have welded that somehow because it's affecting that and that when I select all so there must be like a fair to see welded somewhere so what I'll do is I'll just select that face and I'll come around and select this we need to fix our geometry here as well but that's the inside part we don't need X and remove faces so that kind of freed up this piece now and if I look at that from the side from the Y or the graphic I can see that it's not quite long enough so I'm just going to pull this across that red is in my way so I'll probably come out of water graphic I'm just going to line it up best I can here okay so with that there now what we can do is Probably cut. No, actually, I'm not going to cut that because it'll mean getting rid of the inside here, which I want to keep for the moment. So, for now, I'll just leave that as it is. And I'll do the same on this side here. I just wanted to close this gap. Like that. Okay, so that's pretty optimized. I just need to fix the geometry part now for this window and for ease of access here I'm going to separate this piece and I'll isolate it now we can come around the or even the front side will do where it's highlighted and I'm going to use my knife tool so select it come into edit mode A to select the knife and I want to just cut these cut these lines out again like we did on the front to uh, confirm the selection and now we'll just do this bottom corner okay and we will put that right so i want to join that back up again now that it's cut into into the um tries we need i'll select that piece select the rest of the roof isolate it now Control j to join them tab go to edit mode one to select verts a, select all verts, right click and merge vertices by distance. And because that removed four vertices, I know it's done this job because it welded each of the four corners and it got rid of the extra vertices. So, four vertices, absolutely what we wanted there. So, that's ready to UV unwrap now. Um. Okay. So, what's the best way to go with this? I think I'm gonna have to explain a little bit about the way the UV works. But before I do, I wanna fix that. I didn't notice that gap there. Okay, so. I'm gonna select, select these guys, go side order graphic, and I'll go into X ray. I'm just going to drag each of these It can be a bit confusing Especially when you're in um, X3 Because you don't really know which of the verts you're pulling They kind of overlap but on something like this, you know that they all need to come back to meet that slope of roof anyway, so you, you're not, you can't really go wrong with this. Let's go one at a time and pull it back till it needs. Now, 
Cut it up. From the inside here, if we were going to actually make this interior, we'd need to design something to cover that up. But I won't worry about that yet. Maybe even at all. Um, yeah, so I think to actually take this further, I need to kind of explain the way the texture atlas is going to work and um, how the UVs need to be done, the specific way that they tile without seams, so you get a clean result from it. So, yeah, let's just get on with that, I guess. To understand what a texture atlas is, the best way is to just really show you straight up what it is. I quickly quickly created one and um, I'm going to, if I go to image edit, you probably won't have this here by the way, I just added that tab in to show you. So this is a, um, a texture atlas. Um, basically it's one texture consisting of multiple textures. So it's one image made up of multiple textures. So rather than having a separate texture for roof tile, say, and then some for your walls, some for your painted wood, some for your rough wood. Like, you try to get what you can onto one texture and give priority in size and pixel density to the more important ones. So, we know that the walls and the roofs are the biggest, um, the biggest objects that we're going to be tackling for the moment. And the reason why they're squared as well is because in this particular workflow that I'm doing, I try to square uh, the UV islands as squared as possible. So I know that this section here is going to be seamless because if I was to travel off this side and come back in on this side, which if, if you stretch out a texture is basically what it does, I know that that is seamless. So my goal then is to cut the walls up into sections where it's going to completely fill that tile out. So when I put one wall seamlessly beside the other, we won't get a crack down the center of it. And these longer fellas here um, are basically, they're for objects like uh, if we have a piece of wood that's running the length of a house, say, rather than cut that up into segments squared, we can run that one piece of wood indefinitely and it'll constantly overlap and there won't be a seam there. To explain that is not obviously my strong point, so I'm just going to show you straight up how this works. So if I go into my UV editor here, um, what am I working on? I'm just going to isolate this actually. Uh, yeah, I'll bring the whole lot over. Okay, so I'll isolate that. Go to editing and I'll press period key. I need to turn my shortcuts on here, sorry. It's not showing up here for some reason. All right, never mind. I'll just try to explain what I'm doing. All right, so I'm pressing forward slash over the A key to isolate this selector. So now I need to start cutting this up and I'm gonna just very roughly show how this works. But first I need to apply that atlas I made as a material. So I'll go into shading. I'll select the object here and I want to create a material for this. So as long as I'm on this, my mouse cursor is over this top bar. If I use the scroll wheel, I can move back and forward along that bar. And what I want to do is I want to get to this X. I want to remove that material and create a new one from scratch. And I'll call this Atlas 01 because there will be several atlases that we're putting into the scene. So from that, I want to, in this section here, I'm going to press Shift and A. And I want to add a texture and I'm going to add an image texture. So I'll just click and place that somewhere and I want to connect the color to the color node here or the principal node. So color goes into color. Surprise, surprise. And it's given me a black, a black material, but that, that's only because we haven't added the texture into this yet. So I'll go open. I'll find my textures here. Atlas 01 and I'll open that. So now you can see there's something showing up. If I go into modeling tab here, there's something showing up, but because this object hasn't got UVs yet, it's just stretching. So now our job is to cut this up and we're going to find those UVs into different slots. 
So a quick way to do it, I guess, would be um, I'm just going to cut it up into pieces. Right, so I'll take this and I'm going to select. So basically what I'm doing, I'm going to, I'm going to be cutting seams into this. So anywhere I click is where I want to place a seam. So I know there's going to be tiles on this part of the object. And once it gets to the edge here, I want to turn this into like slate or wood or something different. So what I want to do is I want to cut this object here out, because that's going to be the roof tile. And then this is going to be, let's say wood, because it's on the atlas. Okay, so I want to right click. Once I have that edge selected, I'll right click. And I want to come down here to mark seam. And that line will turn red, meaning that that's now a seam. And I want to do the same up the top here. I'll mark seam there and I'm going to actually bring up my UV outline here so I can turn this into a UV editor. I just like to work with this visible. So I want to open image and I will find that atlas. So now, as I'm cutting the UVs off, I know exactly where I want to place them on this. So I will just press L on this. So it's selecting everything that's in those seams. And I'm going to press U and unwrap. And that will basically cut out that UV and place it into this. But you can see now that that texture is now showing up. Obviously, it's not showing up where we want because it's taking all the different textures into consideration. So we now need to make some modification on this. So what I mean by modification is these need to be squared. At the moment that this part of the UV is too long to fit into this and keep it and make it seamless. Like I, it's impossible to do with this shape. So what I need to do is I need to, I'm going to take this object here, this side of it, because this has a big hole cut out of it that's just going to complicate things and as long as I'm working on the side like this first I can get a much cleaner result so what I want to do with this I'll select the, the face itself and I want to press P and separate it the reason being I want to add cuts into this but I don't want the cuts to run along the model and into the other side and then I'm going to use this as a visual to cut cut um, lines into this and square that off. So we know that this is a nice clean clean side to work on here. So if I go into my orthographic view here, it looks like it's shrunk down. That's only because of the perspective. Okay, it looks like it's kind of lying backwards a bit. So when, if I do this, it looks square. It's not square. Okay, so what I want to do is I know that this is four spaces wide if you take the grid into consideration there. And let's say each one of these is going to be four. Okay, so I want this entire thing to fit into that one square, but it's probably more than twice as long as it is wide. So I need to add extra cuts into this. So what I'll do is I will add one cut. In the middle of this okay so now each one of these say are two spaces and that'll actually work out better so i want to go let's say two by two if i can but i can't use guides on the fact that this is lying down i won't get a good a good go with that so what i'm just going to do here is i'll press ctrl or and i'm going to add a couple segments into this just by scrolling my wheel up once the once those lines are there they look a bit too much um, like uh, uh, rectangles so I'm gonna go with that okay and once they're done I can kind of squeeze them a little bit and hope that the result isn't too bad but once we then use those UVs as a template to create the other ones they're gonna line up okay for this so with those selected I'm gonna hold shift and I'll click down the center line here and I'm gonna right click and I'll mark them as a scene now what I can do is come in, select all those faces, press U and unwrap. And that's after pulling them all apart. 
I'm dumping them into this uh, UV here now. So I want to work in a bigger uh, a bigger screen here. So I'm going to go to the UV editor and I'll hover over the top bar here. I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel down and I want to turn this into EV here. So the viewport shader, turn that on and now I can see my texture on the object. And now I can start modifying these UVs. So I'll select the piece I want to work with. Tab to go into edit mode. And as I'm working, if I select something here, if I select the face, I'll see that it'll show up on my UV layout. But if I want them to constantly show up without having to click and find out where they are, I just want to turn on this little button here, the UV sync. If I turn that on, it'll highlight where all my UVs are without being selected. So now I can just grab all of these and pull them off to the side. And now one by one, let's say I wanted this UV for, for some bizarre reason to be a brick wall. I just put, God, I can't do this at all. Yeah, this one here. I'll pull this over the wall and now you can see it's taken on that texture. And let's say I wanted this one here to be wood. I'd bring it in here and shrink that down. And that's the basics of how UV Atlas works. It's you're getting multiple textures onto one image. So I know that this one image, for the most part, is going to serve almost everything that I have in this scene. And that's going to give you a massive boost in performance when you bring this into game engine or whatever you plan on doing with it. So I'm just going to turn this into roof tiles for now. And I'll show you how I use uh, the UV layout for that. 